Right. I got to the bloody... Come closer. These bloody glasses are used to... Piss off! Hello! My name's Professor Humphrey Danglesnatch, and welcome to Science Time! Science time, we're going to be talking about something that's commonly found in British greenhouses. Oi! Get off my bloody garden! Run! Oi! And trees! Can you guess what it is? That's right! That's bloody right! Friction! 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 Friction. I found a bloody stick! What? Okay, so where is friction? Well, it's very easy to find. Actually, it's all around you. <laughs> Chances are you're sitting on a friction right now! But what is friction? Well, friction is a force. Oh, bloody hell, there's dog shit everywhere. This dog! Ah! Kenneth! Kenneth! Come and be my mule! I said, come and be my mule! Go on, get it up, boy. So, friction is a forcicle that stops one thing getting through, or past, or around another thing. There are many types of friction. There is uh, sexual friction. There's social friction. And there is science friction. That's the friction we'll be dealing with today, boy. Come on, get it up, mush. Only one person has ever been known to defeat friction, and that's Michael Jackson. He did this with a scientific equation of moonwalking and disco darts. However, there were consequences for the Michael Jackson. All this tomfoolery turned the black on white and totes creepy. Word. Yes. Ow! Did you know that different objects have different quantities of friction? For instance, water has no friction. Jam has its fair share. But no objects have so much friction as, you've got it, walls! Walls have a vast amount of frictional energy contained within them. You can't see it, but it's there. Yes. Ready? Ready. You may have noticed when you try and pass through a wall that you are blocked by some unseen magical force. But this isn't magic. No, my dear boy, this is science! The reality of this is that tiny particles called friktonites are blocking your path. Even you at home have friktonites. Here, here, and here. Check for them. It's about bloody time you realized how useful they are. Why, without friktonites, your blood and guts would simply fall out onto the floor. You'd die in a pool of your own waste and shame. This is Barry Price. He's a frictionaire. He was born with a rare disorder that causes him to have unlimited friction. He was born in that very spot and hasn't moved since. If he falls down, that's it. Game over. He'd probably be eaten by a fox or some lower class children. Looks old for 12, doesn't he? This isn't actually a beard. This is what he pulled off his mother at birth. Must have been a hairy dame, eh? She was quiet. Mm. Odd fellow, aren't you, Barry? Can you make a quiche? No. Can you satisfy a woman? No. Can you satisfy yourself? No. Do you ever wish you weren't born with unlimited friction? Yes. Yes. This is all very interesting, isn't it? And hilarious. Watch this. That twat. I apologise, Barry. Let's do a quick experiment for the science fans at home. Ready? Follow me. Hands up. Hands down. Hands up. Hands down. Clap. <laughs> oh, you absolute... Bastard! <laughs> what the hell do you think you're doing? With his infinite friction, Barry will never be able to separate his hands again, and it's likely he'll die of malnourishment. <laughs> Why did you do that? <laughs> All fun and jokes aside, it's time for the science question of the week. If time is money, and money is the root of all evil, what is evil? That's easy, boy. Evil's infinite, because time's infinite. But time isn't necessarily infinite. It is for now, boy. Pay attention. Thanks for watching Science Time, and thanks to our guest, Barry. <laughs> Shit! Why, 
die without freak tonight to your blood. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm just having my dinner. <laughs>